So I want to go on to tests now so that you can see what it takes to create a multiple choice test. Um, so if you go to a content area, you can um, click on any content area and choose assessments and then test. And um, so I have one created here I can show you, but I'll click on test. And from here, I can create a new test. So I'll click on create and give it a name and click submit. And that brings me right into my test canvas where I can start creating questions. And so notice there's all these different types of um, questions. And I, I recommend multiple choice, true, false works well. Um, just know that anything like short answer or fill in the blank requires you to manually grade. So if you're hoping for that quick um, short quiz that's a low stakes assessment, we're highly recommending that rather than large high stakes tests at this point, um, that the multiple choice, true, false, and matching all auto grade, but things like short answer and fill in the blank will require you to come in and manually grade each test. So um, the students wouldn't get their score until you go in and do that. Um, so if you want them to get quick feedback, as in their score, telling them how they did, you'll want to stick with those auto-graded assessment types. So essentially, if I choose to create a multiple choice item, I then can put in my question prompt and scroll down and put the answer choices. And notice you mark the correct answer there. So I would put the, the possible answer choices um, and and then at the end, I would click Submit, or I can click Submit and create another and just bounce through and create all of my test items. The scores will automatically feed into the Grade Center. Uh, so you can go to Full Grade Center and find um, the, the responses that the students are getting to their tests. Um, let's see if I have. I may not have one already in here, uh, but essentially you'll see that they, um, the scores will automatically filter into the grade center. And um, if they have trouble and the test crashes, you'll see an icon that looks similar to this attempt in progress, this little blue icon. Um, certainly when they're actually taking the test, they'll all have that icon showing. So you don't wanna reset any test if, if they're truly in progress. Um, but our guides in the, um, the slide deck that you'll receive um, include details on how to reset tests. You can also give um, students who have accommodation needs um, the extra time right in the edit the test option. So let's say I created this test. I can go to edit the test options. And this is where you'll put in all the information such as availability. So you'll want to make it available to students, even if you're going to put a certain time frame, you always want to check make available. Um, you can set a timer. You can put the dates that they'll see the link and the, um, and the time that it'll show up and when the link will disappear. And then right here, you can add a student who needs extra time by clicking add user and then choosing that particular student who needs the extra time. And if you have the timer set, if everyone else gets 60 minutes and they get time and a half, you can type in uh, 90 minutes there. So I just didn't set the timer, so that didn't show up. Um, let me show you that real quick. So add user, choose the student. And now this particular student gets the same um, constraints as everyone else, except that then you can put 90 minutes there. And so that's what assigns them extra time. And then you'll want to make sure it's included in the test um, grade center calculations. Uh, by default, this option is checked. And what that means is when students submit their test, they'll get the score plus the stem of the, the test question. If you don't want them to see anything but the score, be sure to deselect that because that's on by default. And that's one that often surprises folks. So you'll deselect that. Certainly after everyone's taken the test, you can come back and then choose to make available the questions and the answers if you wish to share that information. Generally speaking though, people will typically just let students see the score. And then in terms of the test presentation, the, the most kind of lockdown settings would be that the students see one test item at a time, they prohibit backtracking, 
and they randomize such that any student sitting next to any other student won't see things in the same order and they can't as easily connect and share things. Um, the most loose uh, uh, settings would be all at once. We typically don't recommend that because then their whole test is showing and if they're not engaging with their test often, it might crash on them. So generally speaking, I would at least recommend one item at a time. Um, the other options um, are, are up to you, but then you would essentially hit submit and that would take all those settings.